Hey, welcome back. Uh, DTYG, really missing you guys. Um, we're going to hit the last two verses of James. We've been in James for uh, a good while, um, and it's been heavy hitting the whole way. And these last two verses are no exception. In fact, uh, in some ways, I think that this ending of James's letter might be the heaviest, but also maybe the most hopeful that we've covered so far. Um, so I feel the weight. I feel the weight of going through James 5, 19 and 20. And it feels strange to sit here at my computer and know that you guys are going to watch this um, at your computers on YouTube. It doesn't, it doesn't quite fit. I wish I could see your, your faces as we talk through this, but we trust the Lord's providence and I trust that his word can still go out um, and that it won't return void. Um, so in that hope, um, why don't you open your Bibles if you have them to James 5, 19 and 20. Um, it says this, my brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his, that is, the person who is wandering, save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. So just by way of summary, um, let's remind you of where we've been in the last few weeks. Uh, wise people rely on God. Foolish people rely on their plans and their money. Wise people humbly admit that they can't make anything happen. They can't make their plans happen, not their best intentions. And foolish people confidently swear that they can fulfill their plans and their intentions. And foolish people come under God's condemnation when they fail to fulfill their promises because God takes our word seriously. Wise people trust God's grace, his mercy, his power. And because they trust in God's grace and mercy, they confess their sins. They bring out their sins into the light. And because they trust in God's power, they pray earnestly. They pray for others when they get sick. Foolish people trust in their own power. So, so they hide their sins in the dark and their prayers are ineffective. They don't even pray that often, sporadic. And now this last word that James gives us is that a wise person can save a foolish person. A wise person can save a foolish person. He's issued really strong warnings throughout this letter. So we're not dealing with light, happy-go-lucky issues here. We're dealing with life and death. And it's no surprise that he ends the letter this way. I'm going to read it again. He says, My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. What? Can you imagine greater stakes? It's like that scene in Lord of the Rings. Sorry if you haven't seen Lord of the Rings, but maybe you can still picture it. Um, Frodo and Sam are in Osgiliath, and um, Frodo has the ring, but he can't resist the power of the ring. And there are all these ring wraiths around. They're calling for the ring. So Frodo is in this daze, and he wanders up to the top of one of the broken buildings in the broken city of Osgiliath, and he holds up the ring for the ring rates to take it. And at, at the last moment, well, you know that in that moment, if the ring rates grab the ring, it's the end. It's the end for Frodo. He's going to die. And it's the end for everybody else. Gondor and all mankind are going to get crushed by Sauron. And the Shire, Frodo's home, is going to get burned. But in the last second, Sam runs up to Frodo. And he tackles him. He doesn't just like say, hey, stop, don't, don't do that. He tackles him, throws him down the steps, and saves him. So it's, it's like that. What James is talking about is like that, but it's not like that. The stakes are even higher in James. You might, you might see a friend wandering off into, into pornography. It's not just that 
he or she will damage friendships and even destroy a marriage or a future marriage, as bad as those things are. Or you might see a friend wandering off into drugs or alcohol addiction. And it's not just that they're going to destroy their body and maybe even kill someone else in an accident, as bad as those things are. You might see a friend wander off into, into heresy, uh, the, the pr prosperity gospel, or the belief that Jesus was just a good preacher and not God, or the idea that all people will be saved no matter whether they've trusted in Jesus. It's not just that that person is mistaken and that they might pull other people into error, as bad as those things are. You, you, might, you might see a friend wander off into loving money and comfort and a good job and success and nice vacations. And it's not just that they're wasting their life now and giving in to the American dream at the expense of pursuing the greatest treasure, as bad as those things are. It's more than all of that. The devastation of these sins, the terror of this kind of wandering away into sin is that the punishment, the punishment for the sin, the death for the sin lasts forever. The death that James talks about is an undying death. So what if your body dies? You have an immortal soul. Well, this is heavy. So I just warn you, this is really heavy. Jonathan Edwards, he says it this way. After you shall have worn out the age of the sun, moon, and stars in your groans and lamentations without rest, day and night, or one minute's ease, yet you shall have no hope of ever being delivered. After you shall have worn a thousand more such ages, you shall have no hope, but shall know that you are not one whit nearer to the end of your torments, but that still there are the same groans, the same shrieks, the same doleful cries incessantly to be made by you, and that the smoke of your torment shall still ascend up forever and ever. Your souls, which shall have been agitated with the wrath of God all this while, will still exist to bear more wrath. Your bodies, which shall have been burning all this while in these glowing flames, shall not have been consumed, but will remain to roast through eternity, which will not have been at all shortened by what shall have been passed. These are the stakes. They can't be higher. But they're also not the main point of, that James is making. He's saying that there's a real hope for wandering sinners. He says, my brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Wandering foolish people can be saved by wise people who bring them back. So if you see someone who's wandering, their fate isn't sealed. And listen, if you are wandering, your fate isn't sealed. You can be saved from death. I have two great burdens for this video. One, are you the sort of friend to other Christians where if you see them wandering, you'll bring them back? Will you pray for them? Will you plead with them? Will you run up to the parapet and tackle them tackle them down the steps to save them from death. And Christian, do you have the sorts of friends who will do that for you if they see you start to wander? Ask yourself, if I start to wander, who would bring me back? Do you have friends who will save you from death? And in extent outside of our Christian fellowship or Christian friends, your classmates, your unbelieving family are headed for death, but their fate isn't sealed. Christ will save them if they will trust in him. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, who makes you bold, courageous, strong, 
you can declare the message of salvation. You may be the means, the very means, by which Jesus will save them. You might be the very person that God has, has chosen, has set aside to grab onto their arm just, just when their fingers are slipping and pull them up from the cliff to save them. Here's my second burden for this video. Are you wandering? Come back. I wish I, wish I could see your faces. Come back. You haven't wandered too far. You haven't. You can be saved from death if you will come back. Come back. Christ will cover a multitude of sins. He'll cover all of them. You haven't wandered too far. Come back. And it's not just about covering sins. It's even better than that. So Jonathan Edwards, who just painted that picture for us of hell, paints this picture of heaven. And oh, what joy will there be springing up in the hearts of the saints after they have passed through their wearisome pilgrimage to be brought to such a paradise as this. Here is joy unspeakable indeed and full of glory. Joy that is humble, holy, enrapturing, and divine in its perfection. Love is always a sweet principle and especially divine love. This is even on earth is a spring of sweetness, but in heaven it shall become a stream, a river, an ocean. All shall stand about the God of glory, who is the great fountain of love, opening, as it were, their very souls to be filled, to be filled with those effusions of love that are poured forth from his fullness, just as the flowers on the earth in the bright and joyous days of spring open their bosoms to the sun to be filled with his light and warmth and to flourish in beauty and fragrancy under his cheering rays. It's not just that you're fleeing from hell. You are coming to this sort of treasure, this joy, this peace. So I plead with you. I plead with you. Come back. Come back from your wandering. Trust in this Jesus who will save you. Like I said, it's a heavy message to end James, but it's also a joyous message. There is great hope. So are you the sort of friend who will bring back a wanderer? And if you are wandering, come back. Come back. Jesus will cover all of your sin. And with that, you are loved and you are missed.